National Political News had a number of headlines this week after Joe Biden announced that he will not run for president, which boosted Hillary Clinton's campaign prospects amid testimony in front of Congress <coughs> for the Benghazi hearing. Meanwhile, Republican Representative Paul Ryan agreed to run for House Speaker with specific conditions. Now, Patty, there's a lot of issues going on in this particular topic. What do you take from it? Well, and on top of that, we've got the Republican debate coming to see you next week. So we are going to be talking about this upcoming election a lot over the next few weeks. We didn't learn a lot from the Benghazi hearing, the billionth Benghazi hearing yesterday, beyond the fact that Hillary Clinton can actually sit and take it for a very long period of time. You're in that chair for half an hour. She was there for hours and kept her cool pretty much, which I think stood her in a very good stead. The fact that Joe Biden decided not to run is a win-win for Hillary. It's hard to imagine that there is any real obstacle that is going to stand in her way to getting the nomination unless we suddenly learn a lot more that we didn't know about Benghazi and her insane use of the private servers for the emails, one of which was based here. Um, the Paul Ryan, good luck to you. Get that man an asbestos suit. I think he could be a very good speaker if he's willing to do it, if they take his conditions, but that is just going to be quite the three-ring circus. So good luck to him. David, there's very many places that we can go on this topic. What would you say from well, it? Well, Joe Biden's rationale for his candidacy was never, I'm the smartest guy you could elect, but he had an affable uh, attitude and understood the difference between a political opponent versus a, uh, a personal enemy. And uh, if he'd been smart enough to start this thing half a year sooner, uh, he might well uh, have won the Democratic nomination and the presidency. For Benghazi, I think everyone has to agree that at least some of the hearings were a complete waste of time, namely putting Hillary Clinton under oath as if, oh, now she'll feel compelled to tell the truth. She has more experience being cross-examined uh, than anybody uh, outside the mafia. We learned from this that when she was telling the families of the Benghazi victims and the American public that this attack on the Benghazi compound was a spontaneous riot because of a YouTube video. She knew that was a lie right from the very start and was saying the opposite to, uh, to Egypt and to her own family. Uh, Natasha, what do you make of this topic? Well, I think uh, Joe Biden is kind of like the guy you invite to your party who you really want to come and you spend the first hour looking out the window wondering if he's going to come. Well, Biden's RSVP is finally here. He's not coming. It's time to move on, um, which leads to Clinton. I think that what was interesting as well, I don't think a lot of progress was made in getting to the truth or a better understanding of what could have been done to prevent or fix or solve or done after um, the situation in Benghazi. What we did instead was see Hillary Clinton in, on, in the hot seat for many, many hours, looking quite presidential, actually. And if the GOP, GOP's plan was to sort of you know, hurt her reputation. I'm not sure that they achieved that um, with the hearings this week. With Paul Ryan, you know, I've heard people already describe it as a selfless act, like he's some martyr who's going in to save the GOP and, and Congress in Washington, D.C. Um, I won't quite discount that. I think that, he, that there is some sort of call to duty here, but I think it's also uh, a chance for him. I think he sees that if I can go in and do these things, then I would have a really good chance at a presidential run, and that has to be part of of his calculation. Whether he's able to do that or not, whether the, the GOP people have decided, yeah, we'll go along for it, now we'll stay with that promise for the long run is yet to be determined. Um, and I think he has a, a tough road ahead of him. Craig, there's a lot to bite off with this one. Can you wrap it up for us? Well, mark me down as being with David. And the only way she looked presidential in my judgment was uh, her imitation of Barack Obama, who told the same lie to the families told it at the United Nations. And you shouldn't lie about murder. You shouldn't lie in general, but especially not to families of the deceased. She told the truth to her daughter, but she lied to the family of the survivors. That's a little shocking. And thanks to this uh, Benghazi hearing, we learned this truth. I don't know that Joe Biden's not going to show up at this party. He gave a campaign speech. He specifically dissed Hillary Clinton. What does he know that we don't know? She's under investigation by the FBI. She could be indicted. Who's waiting in the wings? 
Joe Biden, he says, I'm ready, I'm rested. I'm not saying that's going to happen because, uh, you know, it's, but it's possible. It's possible. And uh, Hillary maybe didn't get knocked out at that Benghazi hearing, but she took some hard and legitimate punches. As for Paul Ryan, if he can't run things as Speaker, who can? And the answer to that is nobody. And that's the problem with the GOP. They're in disarray. Even while Hillary Clinton is telling her stories, they're so disorganized that they can't take advantage of it. But we'll see what happens in Boulder this week. It'll be interesting. New frontrunner in Iowa, Ben Carson, and uh, he could be formidable.